just days before the Mexican election, the latest poll has Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador in first place with 50% of the vote, Ricardo Anaya of the Conservative Coalition with 25%, and Jose Antonio Meade of the ruling Institutional Revolutionary Party, or PRI, behind with only 19% of voter preference. The national and international press is already writing stories on Mexico's ideological about-face, from decades of neoliberal rule to a center-left or left-wing or nationalist populist leader, the exact label depending on the political orientation of the media group doing the reporting. While many global media outlets, including financial publications, seem to have accepted a López Obrador presidency, the Washington Post recently published an editorial so biased and derogatory in its rejection of the Mexican frontrunner that it could have been written by a top aide to Anaya, who will remain nameless. The editorial slams López Obrador's popular campaign as reactionary, claims it will worsen U.S.-Mexico relations currently at an all-time low, warns of trouble at the border, and raises the tired specter of Venezuela. There's a tone of desperation behind the intentionally inflammatory criticisms of the likely next president of Mexico. Other English language media display less of a vested interest in Mexico's internal democratic process than the Post. Although most are focused on the personality, the impact on the geopolitics of the region begins to be a subject of speculation, as the outcome appears obvious. With NAFTA renegotiations stalled and the immigration crisis purposely exacerbated by the Trump administration at the expense of human lives, a retuning of the U.S.-Mexico relationship is inevitable. And with the rest of Latin America undergoing major realignments in all directions, from Colombia and Paraguay's elections of right-wing leaders to Brazil's continued political meltdown, a López Obrador presidency will change the dynamics of the entire region. Faced with López Obrador's overwhelming lead, the two other major coalitions are duking it out for political survival at this point. Although there were momentary efforts to forge an anti-AMLO alliance, now the two are at each other's throats, with Anaya accusing Meade of direct involvement in the Odebrecht scandal and the PRI threatening to investigate Anaya for money laundering. The Post's dire warning of trouble at the border if the Mexican electorate fails to elect its preferred candidate is especially ironic considering the real crisis of family separation that exploded in the media just days after its editorial opinion came out. The Trump administration's practice of tearing children from their parents at the border that began in April hasn't become a major campaign issue here, but it should be. It took days for Foreign Minister Luis Videgaray, the same one who invited candidate Trump to Mexico and claims to be a friend of Jared Kushner's, to come out with a strong protest, finally calling the policy cruel and inhumane on June 19th. Videgaray denied claims that the Peña administration has muted its protest in order to obtain a favorable outcome in NAFTA renegotiation. He stated that Mexico is willing to support the governments of these three nations to confront this difficult situation, referring to Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador, where the majority of migrant families come from. He did not say that Mexico would support the migrant families who continue to come over Mexico's southern border. López Obrador called the policy racist and intolerant and called on the Mexican government to issue a formal diplomatic note, which it did, urged the intervention of the UN High Commission on Human Rights, and called to send teams of lawyers, psychologists, and social workers to the border. Meade called it soulless, and Anaya condemned the policy that's taken now some 2,300 children from their families. All candidates promised to defend human rights. Meanwhile, as a result of massive public outcry in the United States and the world, Trump replaced the family separation policy and announced that the zero tolerance strategy of his government will now be enforced through family incarceration. The barbaric practice has provoked outrage in U.S. society. And while the purpose seems to be to fire up the base, that is, mobilize hardcore anti-immigrant Trump supporters, millions of Americans repudiated the policy. Here's a clip of prominent liberal newscaster Rachel Maddow on receiving news that babies were being taken from their mother's arms to tender aid shelters in Texas. The AP has just broken some new news. Um, this has just come out from the Associated Press. 
This is incredible. Trump administration officials have been sending babies and other young children. Oh. Hold on. <laughs> to at least three. Oh. Can we put up the graphic of this? Thank you. Do we have it? No. Three tender age shelters in South Texas. Lawyers and medical providers. Just, I think I'm going to have to hand this off. Yeah. Sorry. That does it for us tonight. We'll see you again tomorrow. Now it is time for the last word with Lawrence O'Donnell, where he is live in Brownsville, Texas. Thank you very much, Rachel. We... In Mexico, soon the three coalitions will close with their final rallies, and the nation enters a period when all campaign activities must be suspended by law. The Lopez Obrador campaign will end up with a rally in concert on June 27th in Mexico City's Aztec Stadium. The Anaya campaign is staging final rallies in different regions across the country, and the Mead campaign has announced three closing rallies. The National Electoral Institute reports that more than 600 foreign experts and human rights experts on elections will be arriving to take part in international election observation, as hundreds of Mexicans also prepare to take their places at the polls as observers, and millions plan to go out to vote. Violence and reports of illegal activities and irregularities continue to characterize the pre-electoral period with a relatively meek response from electoral authorities. This will be the largest election ever in terms of the number of positions to be filled and is likely to be among the highest turnouts. History in the making, without a doubt. This has been this week's Mexican Elections Update. I'm Laura Carlson with Rompe Viento TV.